We are in the middle of a seven day lockdown here in South Australia, which unfortunately means businesses are closed, people are out of work, and therefore that means people start to struggle financially. So today I wanna to talk to you about the government supports that are available during lockdown. This will obviously be based mainly around South Australia, but the main government payment is a Commonwealth payment, and therefore the rules are very similar across each state. Anyway, let's get into the video. Hello everyone, my name is Ethan Rushok, and as I just said, we're in the middle of a lockdown here in South Australia, which means people are looking to find out what government supports are available. So I wanted to run through, we've got kind of two different areas here. We've got the Commonwealth COVID-19 disaster payment, which is pretty standard across South Australia, Victoria and New South Wales at the moment. Now I will be talking mainly about the South Australian rules, but they are very similar. And then if you are a business owner here in South Australia, skip forward further into the video, you'll be able to see the jump part down the bottom. And I'll be talking about the COVID-19 business support grant that's available for South Australian businesses. Now, if you are a business owner in one of the other states, go on your state government's website, search for COVID-19 grant, New South Wales, Victoria, you'll find something because most states have something in place, but obviously their rules and eligibility differs between the different states for those business ones that are run by the state governments. So the first thing I wanna talk about is the COVID-19 disaster payment. Now this is a Commonwealth payment, but a lot of state governments have jumped on board to help fund this. So I'll talk about it from a South Australian point of view, but it is very similar in the other states, but you might wanna just go to the Services Australia website and have a look at the eligibility so you can just clear up some of those small differences. So this is the Commonwealth payment to help support those that are out of income through their employment. So I'll jump over here and you're about to see that the eligibility for South Australia is currently from the 20th of July to the 26th of July, which is our lockdown period. Claims will open from the 28th of July and they'll close on the 24th of July. So obviously that'll cover our lockdown period. If our lockdown gets extended, then these payments get extended. And once you're in the system, it will automatically keep rolling forward. You don't have to keep reapplying for each lockdown period. But obviously if your situation changes, you need to let them know. So obviously like any government payment, the main thing you need to know first of all is who is eligible. So I'll jump over here and this is all on the Services Australia website. But you can go through and so this is the eligibility criteria here in South Australia. So you need to be an Australian resident or hold a visa that gives you the right to work in Australia. Australia, you're 17 years or older, you're not getting any government income support payments or paid parental leave, and you're not getting a pandemic leave disaster payment. And then the key one obviously is you've lost income and you don't have appropriate paid leave entitlements. So obviously this will pick up a lot of casual workers that don't get leave entitlements, that are working in, for instance, hospitality that have had to close, they can't get employment obviously, and therefore they'll be eligible for this payment. Now this next part here is interesting. So as you'll see, it says that you live, work from, or have visited a Commonwealth declared COVID-19 hotspot. Now, the Commonwealth government only declares certain areas a hotspot. So I think here in South Australia, that's just the Adelaide region, but the South Australian government have jumped in and because they've done a statewide lockdown, they're going to make this eligible to all South Australians that have lost income due to and meet these eligibility criteria and they will fund it, but it will still be done through the same Commonwealth government system, which makes it really simple, which is really good. And then the other one here is you were unable to earn your usual income of eight hours or more or a full day's work because you're in a COVID-19 hotspot. So obviously this is based on people that have either lost a full day's worth of work or at least eight hours for the week. Now the good thing with this payment here in South Australia, there's no liquid assets test, which means it doesn't matter how much savings you've got. If you meet these eligibility criteria, you'll be eligible no matter what. So obviously the other big question everyone wants to know is how much can you get? So this is on a bit of a tiered system. So we have two different tiers here. So as you'll see, we've got the amount if you lost less than 20 hours of work per week is $375. And if you lost 20 hours or more per week, it's $600. And these are backdated. So as you can see, the payment comes from the 28th of July for the week prior of the lockdown. So obviously if we extend another week of lockdown, you'll get paid after that. So you get paid post the lockdown period. So that would kind of reflect normally that if you've lost a week of wages, obviously you would work that week and then you'd get paid the next week. So that's kind of why it's set up like that rather than in advance, because obviously some of these lockdowns change. We've had a lockdown here in South Australia previously it got cut short. It doesn't look like that's going to be the case this time, but that's why the payments kick in after the lockdown period. Now, the good thing is 
how to apply is pretty simple. You go through the MyGov system. Now you've got to make sure you've got your Centrelink linked to your MyGov. So that's different if you've lost your own tax return linked ATO, that's a different service. So if you don't normally get Centrelink payments, you need to make sure you link Centrelink to your MyGov and then you apply through that system. As I said earlier, once you've applied, you don't need to keep applying each lockdown period, but you do need to update if your details change and you get back into employment. Now, obviously we're still yet to see what's gonna happen in this lockdown. Hopefully it does end at that seven day point, but there may still be restrictions in place. So I'm not sure how that's gonna work as to whether they'll broaden the eligibility or whether they'll change the payment rates if there's still some type of lockdown in place, even if other things have opened up. So keep your eye out for them. And just always remember with government payments, things change. So you just wanna keep yourself updated because the worst case scenario, you don't wanna miss out on something you should have got or get overpaid for something and then have to pay it back. Now, the only other thing I do wanna to touch on these payments is they are gonna be taxable payments, but it's unlikely you'll be taxed on them at the time. You can set this up normally through Centrelink, but normally the default is you won't have tax withheld. So this is just something to keep in mind next year when you go to do the tax, if you do get this payment, and especially in some of those other states where it's gonna be for multiple weeks, you may not be having tax withheld on this and therefore you need to take that into account if you go back into employment or you've already earned money or you're running a business or something like that on the side you're going to have other income that is likely going to push you over that tax free threshold then just consider whether you need to put away a little bit of money for tax for this so the second one i'll talk about is for sa business owners so like i said if you're in one of the other states look you're gonna to have to do a little bit of your own research into these go to your state government website because this is just going to be mainly based around the south australian government support that we've got here for business owners so we've got a three thousand dollar grant available for employing businesses for those that employ people and a thousand dollar grant for those that are non-employing businesses so for those that don't have any employees and this is going to help businesses but it's definitely not going to solve all the problems especially for big businesses that have had to shut for a whole week so it's based on a 30 percent decline in turnover based on the prior week to the lockdown so you're comparing the week of the lockdown with the week before the lockdown and there are some other eligibility criteria so i'll jump into that here so the other eligibility criteria and this is all going to be based on the start of the restriction period so 1201 on tuesday the 20th of july 2021 so you must be be located within south australia have an annual turnover of $75,000 or more in 2020 slash 2021 or 2019 slash 2020 and be registered for GST. So this is a real tough one because it wipes out a lot of really small businesses. So if you're a small PT or a small beautician and you only turn over $50,000, $60,000 a year and you're not registered for GST, unfortunately, you're not eligible for this. And this is kind of in line with some of the eligibility criteria around JobKeeper. So I'll jump back in here. So we've got have a valid or active ABN and they've got must employ people in South Australia. So this is only relevant if you're trying to get the $3,000 grant. So for employing businesses, this eligibility criteria is wiped, obviously, if you're aiming for the $1,000 non-employing businesses one. And then the other thing for the employing businesses one, your total Australian payroll has to be $10 million or less. And then obviously the main one to determine that eligibility, as I discussed before, is experienced a at least a 30% reduction in turnover in the week of Tuesday 20th July to Monday the 26th of July compared to the previous week. This is inclusive of GST and that's got to be due to restricted trading conditions. So that will be the main thing is obviously if you're running a cafe and you've had to completely close, you'll meet that 30% criteria of reduced turnover. So that's going to be the main test. But like I said, unfortunately for a lot of small micro businesses, that $75,000 in turnover and being registered for GST could be where they are deemed ineligible. So the other thing people obviously wanna know is do they have to declare anything? Do they have to provide any proof? So I'll jump over here again. And as you see, businesses will be required to declare that they have experienced a loss or reduction in turnover due to restricted trading conditions, but they're not required to provide any supporting information at the time of application. But like anything, you have to hold on to your information just in case of an audit. So in this case, they're saying you need to keep this support for 12 months. So what I'll do is jump in and have a look at what they're saying. So you've got things such as a turnover comparison data from the week prior. So that's a really easy one to show. Look, this is what we turned over this week. This is what we turned over the week prior. You can see that that would be a more than 30% deduction. Then you've got things like emails or texts to or from clients or suppliers, detail and cancelled orders or appointments, receipts for refunds provided, invoices or delivery dockets, appointment scheduling platform demonstrating cancelled appointments or bookings, or screenshots of cancelled events. So you really want any kind of proof that you can show that your business was affected. So for instance, if you're running a service-based business that could only do in-person appointments, you might have a full calendar booked. Obviously those appointments would then have to be cancelled. So screenshots of that calendar to show, look, we had all this stuff scheduled, we had to cancel 
Therefore, obviously that impacted turnover. Now, obviously this grant is in place for this lockdown period. If lockdown gets extended, then we could see changes to this. We could see changes to eligibility. Keep your eye on that. And then the other thing to keep in mind is you do have until the 30th of September to apply for this grant. So you don't have to do it right now. So if you go over to the treasury.sa.gov.au site, you have all the details on how you can apply. They're still working on getting the portal in place for this application. There is a spot where you can register your interest so you get notified of how that will all work. And I imagine it'll be a bit like the other government grants where typically they put these things in place. You get paid after a certain period of lockdown so they know that that was a full lockdown. And then obviously if the lockdown extends or whether we have reduced restrictions but some kind of lockdown, they may put differing um, grants and differing eligibility and differing amounts for differing periods. So keep your eye on that treasury website because that'll have all the information you need. Lockdowns really do highlight the need for having some kind of emergency fund. So whether that's you as an individual and you're just earning a wage, you want to have some kind of backup funds if you lost your employment. And then as a business, you definitely need some kind of emergency funds. You don't want to be running your cash flow down to zero each week. You want to have some kind of positive longer term cash flow. So if things do change, because business has a lot more risks than just lockdowns, is that you've got some emergency funds to get you through to make payroll, to make rent, to make insurance, pay your bills, so that then your business can operate another week, another month, another year. And obviously for business owners and individuals, you want to start thinking about what other streams of income could you generate? So if you are an individual, what's other things that you could do from home? If you're a business owner, can your business offer some kind of online services? So if you're a PT, a Pilates instructor, can you offer online classes? If you're a chef, obviously you might not be able to go to work unless you're doing takeaway, but well, could you start a YouTube channel talking about what you do, showing recipes, teaching people how to cook, using different streams of income to give yourself backup that if you do get put into a lockdown or you do lose your employment or your business does see a downturn, you've got a different way of earning money and all different backup funds. I hope that's been helpful. As I said, things are changing. They're changing all the time. Keep your eye on your government websites because typically they're really good to explain what support, speak to your accountant, look on social media, keep an eye out for things and then do your own research into things. I hope that's been helpful and I hope everyone is taking care during these lockdowns and you've got the right support around you. We will get through this and hopefully they don't last too long. I appreciate you supporting my channel. I really appreciate that. Don't forget to hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, check out some other content and I'll talk to you again soon.